You are listening to the Evolve Your Intimacy podcast with Dr. Stephanie, where it is my goal to educate, enlighten, and evolve your intimacy. You can find me at evolveyourintimacy.com to learn more about counseling, self-study courses, sex, and the retreats that we have to offer. This show contains discussions about relationships, intimacy, and sex, and is meant for those who are 18 years and older. Now sit back, relax, listen up, and get ready to evolve your intimacy. Are you Googling how to ask a woman on a date and how to know if she likes you back or how to find the right partner? Maybe you feel like you need to go on a first date, but you don't know how to make those good impressions and you thought this this first date was going to go great, but there's not a connection. Or maybe you have an important dinner coming up with a girl that you really are into and you want to impress her with a kick-ass outfit, but you don't know what to wear. Well, today we have Celeste Moore with us and she is a dating and image consultant with 15 years of experience helping men improve their appearance, relationship, and confidence. And she is what she calls herself as a professional wing woman and like a female version of the Will Smith and Hitch. Uh, She gives the men the confidence they need by helping them look and feel better about themselves so they can step out of their comfort zones and into the arms of a compatible partner. That sounds amazing. But before we interview Celeste, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Are you interested in learning more about the topics that we discuss on the show? Head over to ASN Lifestyle Magazine, where you can read all the articles that I publish about relationships, intimacy, and sex. When it comes to the lifestyle and the adult industry magazines, look no further than ASN Lifestyle Magazine. They are the natural go-to for everything lifestyle and adult content. Get your free digital issue today at asnlifestylemagazine.com. And if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to ask Stephanie And we are back. You are listening to the Evolve Your Intimacy podcast with Dr. Stephanie, and I am Dr. Stephanie. Super fun announcement before we bring Celeste on. I know you just heard the ASN commercial, and I am so proud to say that I won three ASN awards this year thanks to you all who voted for me and believed in me and kept me going. So thank you so much because these awards are a direct reflection of you guys. So again, thanks. Now, let's bring Celeste on. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to uh, you know, get into it. Yes, your <laughs> profession. I found you. I was scrolling through the internet one night, probably late because I don't sleep, and I saw your <laughs> ad and I was like, hold on, this woman, number one, you're gorgeous, and number two, hold I was on. like, your job is amazing. So I want to know what led you down this path of coaching and consulting men in the dating industry. Well, I guess I can start off with graduating from college. I was going down the law school route mm-hmm. and um, I don't know, I was taking the the LSATs and I was just like, you know what? I don't think I want to do this. I don't think this is for me. I know this is what I was conditioned to and everybody expected me to do. But then I really started to look at some of my passions, some of the things I was really great at doing. And then I actually got certified as a matchmaker first. Really? And yes. So I trained in New York, got certified, but, you know, I was still quite really young and a little bit green and I didn't really have the database or felt really comfortable. So I kind of put that on the side burner. And the next thing that I just love to do is, and that I'm great at doing is just dressing people and like making them feel great. And I, you know, I didn't think that was actually a career or a job. So <laughs> I started doing some research and uh, became certified as an image consultant and really, really loved. There's so much, there's so many things within this industry that I, that I love doing. And in the beginning, I started working with women and men mm-hmm. and, you know, I feel, really felt that women were so difficult to work with, but that was just my experience. Um, It was always like a fight or a challenge or I agree with that, (laughs) you know, and it's like the men just were, okay, sure, whatever. Like, let's go from point A to point B. And then it was just like seamless. And it was great. Part of before I did all this, I was a dancer in college, a topless dancer, you know, so I worked with a lot of like 
I used to see how men were trying to like, even in the club situation, and I know there was like money involved. And so it was a little bit different, but, you know, I would study them and I would see kind of what was going on. And then I started, and then I was dating, of course, when I was younger and I would really see what was the difference in a confident guy Mm -hmm. and a guy that wasn't confident. And I was just kind of studying them like, Not that I knew that I was going to go down this profession, but um, I look back and I'm like, wow, I just have a plethora of knowledge. Absolutely. And then I, yeah. And I just thought it was like the absolute best thing in the world that I can help men really navigate the dating world and really teach them, you know, like what us women want. What do we want? Because it gives them a little bit different perspective versus like a guy. You know, everybody goes, well, what, what makes you you're a female. So how can you coach men? And I'm like, well, I guess I'm generally speaking, mostly heterosexual guys. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So then I'm like, wait, but I'm, I am like a, the woman that you want to date, right. I'm a high value woman. I'm successful. I'm all of these things. So let me tell you what we're looking for and let's, let's kind of, you know, meet in the middle and then you're going to be successful. So I <laughs> that's kind that. of how my, journey began, if you will. Sure. And so you said that you have mainly heterosexual businessmen or who kind of who's your demographic? Yeah. So pretty much now, as I've gotten older, it's about 40 to 60, give or take younger, a little bit older. Um, It's interesting because my clients are not just single, but they're married. And, and I'll tell you what that means is I've got wives calling me, mm-hmm. help my husband get his sexy back because, you know, either there's just no passion. He's like, he stopped taking care of himself. He stopped dating me. Like I need some passion back in my life. I need some sex back in my life. So it's, it's that. And it's also the guy that has been married to his career, the surgeon, the guy that's done years and years of school. Or just an IT guy. And I hate to put labels on just some of my clients. So sure. just just so you know, um, you know, the guy that just is in front of a computer all day and then he thinks that he can wear that on a date. And it's just like, well, I just don't. He just doesn't know. Right. Nobody ever taught him. Sure. <laughs> There's no classes on how to dress properly. I mean, corporate guys know how to dress corporate, but, you know, it's taking that that corporate style and putting that into a weekend or date style. So we have, it sounds like some of the same demographic. I work with a lot of couples who have lost their passion or lost their sex drive, or maybe one has a higher libido than the other. And they're just like, help, what can we do? Yeah. But I like how the wives are calling you saying, Hey, (laughs) come on now. (laughs) Right. I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor or a therapist, so that I leave to the professionals like sure. you. Yeah. <laughs> I just help them look good, feel confident again, kind of reinvent themselves. Cause we, I think we go through many uh, seasons in our lives. Right. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be stuck in a season that was when you married your wife and it's 20 years later. Um, and you know, how to date again, like how, how to spice things up. And, and it's very limited to something that of course you would probably uh, you know, teach them. So <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, okay. I'm so I'm fascinated. Break down the process. How do you help them achieve this confidence in dating? Yeah. So usually um, I like to do a three month minimum transformation because I pretty much start from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. Um, we really start off with, you know, I have a bunch of questionnaires and homework to try to define maybe what is their style or what they want to achieve. So we start with a color analysis. And and basically what that means is based on your eyes, your hair, your skin tone, and even your personality, believe it or not, um, you have certain colors that really, like naturally your skin will just be highlighted. You'll just be Your features will be more intense versus wearing the wrong color where it can make you look sick. Mm -hmm. And without knowing, right, guys don't know this. Most guys, I I should 
practice that. <laughs> um, I'm a female and I don't know this. So I'm okay. learning. I'm over here taking notes as you're talking. I'm like, color analysis, look that up right. for myself. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's amazing because, and also I teach them their power colors, you know, behind color is there's a psychology. It's the first thing we notice when we see anything in life, mm -hmm. person, a flower is color. And it has a, it says, it sends a message. So based on that message, based on the situation, what are you trying to say? Right. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of psychology behind there. So that's the first thing we do. Then we do a wardrobe and style analysis. And basically based on their goals and their body type, because, you know, our bodies change as we get older. Absolutely. Some, <laughs> sometimes there's that, you know, a little bit more of a belly um, or we're just not as fit or just, you know, our bodies change. Mm -hmm. So really getting the right style and wardrobe for them and their body type. And then teaching them how to shop for uh, quality versus quantity, because when you're buying, like, just say uh, a, a Pico, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there, and you spend a little bit more money on the quality of it, you know, how many times are you going to wear it? I always do this cost per wear. So mm -hmm. if you're going to wear something once, maybe you rent it, like if it's a gown for a gala, maybe you, you know, rent it or, or a tux or something. But if it's a piece that you're going to be wearing. And you get five to 10 years because it's a classic stable, right? So I teach a lot of that. I also go through their wardrobe in their closet and figure out what's not working. Let's donate. Let's get rid of. You're never getting into those jeans. They're 20 years old. Okay. No holes, no whatever, you know, mm -hmm. just the right so that they can walk into their closet, pick an outfit out for their date, whatever that looks like. If it's a day date, a night date. And it's easy, right? They know they, they look great. That's building that confidence. They put that on. They know that they can look at themselves in the mirror and they just, you know, it's just this extra boost of confidence. Um, and then, you know, we go through, I, I also do personal shopping. So I kind of fill in the, the gaps or the holes. And then, um, we, I also do, um, profile audits, uh, for dating profiles. So whether they're online dating or seeing a matchmaker, I, um, it's very important that we work on pictures, you know, that's huge, right? Mm -hmm. Um, their bios, their, if really getting down to what it is that they want. And, and I don't think a lot of people know that, right. Especially if they're new to dating or they've been divorced and now they're like learning how to date in this crazy world that we live in now. Right. <laughs> like that wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't the case when, um, you know, 20 years ago they were in college and, you know, there's a plethora of women. So it was easy to meet someone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we really kind of look, make, we get really crystal clear what it is they're looking for. Okay. And then put that in and make sure it matches with their profile, right? Make sure that's what they're saying give it some humor, give it some style and keeping it authentic, making sure that they're not lying about their height or their age or their weight, or please, like you're going to, <laughs> whatever you put in there, you will attract your person, but mm -hmm. you have to be honest. Right. So, so for uh, our yeah. listener, for a, an average man listening right now, you said profile pictures. Mm -hmm. So as I'm entering the dating world again, I see these pictures and they're holding their fish, they're holding their guns, uh, they're holding, or, you know, they're half their heads chopped off. So what, what do you feel makes a great profile picture? That's a great question because men, even if you love to fish or hunt and that is your thing, and I respect that, um, please don't post any pictures on your dating profile. Women do not like it. They don't, it, it's, it's such a turnoff. All the women that I've talked to, no, no, no. Oh my God. What is this? So my idea is you need a great smile pick, right? You mm -hmm. need a, a very kind of uh, waist up. It doesn't have to be super professional if that's not what you're doing, but make sure that you have a, you're looking at the camera, you have a little bit of smile. We want to see that. Um, we don't want to see you looking like it's a mugshot yes. or a bathroom pick with your shirt off or a wife beater on or whatever, you know, we don't <laughs> please. And it needs to be in good lighting. Mm -hmm. you and also what does good lighting not, mean? 
So good lighting is not the bathroom light. Um, good lighting is you facing a, if you're inside, facing a window with a light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, outside is also great. Have, and, and, and don't put pictures of other people on there. Like, especially if it's like a niece or nephew and it's a kid that looks a little creepy. Um, and if it's like five of you, you know, all hanging out, it's like, okay, well, where is that person at? Yeah. Which one so, are you? Yeah. And also I think it's important to do, you know, an activity that you love to do. If it's like, you know, water skiing or traveling or you have a dog or a cat or one of those things are also really great, but have at least three really great pictures. Make sure that you're wearing clothes. You're selling yourself. This is like, hello, here I am. This is who I am, but just elevate yourself because honestly, the pictures are, is what is going to get the woman to go to your bio and then she's going to read your bio. So it's really, really important. So headlines, and I, I'm, I'm fascinated with this right now because I have been looking at dating websites and I, some of the headlines just make me, I don't even click on the pictures. I'm like, what? One of them I think was, um, I'll be your Huckleberry or I'm your Mr. Right. And I'm like, well, how do you No, no, give me something, give me something clever. So what are some clever headlines do you think that can attract attention? So I think it's important that you have a clear one sentence, kind of who you are and what you're looking for. Um, uh, let's see, um, make sure that you're clear with looking for, if you're looking for marriage, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, make sure that that's clear mm -hmm. because not everybody's looking for the same thing. Um, but yeah, be a little humorous or just talk a little bit about who you are and that can, obviously that varies, but yeah, miss, I'm your Mr. Right. Um, you don't know that I'm <laughs> That's the case. Or Your search is over. Yeah. So search yeah. no more. <laughs> <laughs> search no more. You know, just be authentic and real. And um, yeah, don't say any of that. <laughs> it really, it's really, it's really customized to the person. So I wish I could say that, but all those, yeah, are big no. I, yeah, it's, I have not clicked on any of them. I'm not looking for marriage, but you know, a free dinner would be great. So, I mean, I'm you know, <laughs> yeah. I, and I would describe, you know, a lot of my clients, I really teach them um, and curate a high value man. Mm -hmm. And I, if, if people don't really know what that means, it is somebody that is confident in himself personally, that he works on himself constantly, meaning that he's, he's learning and self-improving himself, whether it's in health and fitness, mentally, uh, in relationships, whether he's reading or he's taking a class here and there, maybe he's just, you know, he's in that space of taking care of himself. Because when we see that as a high value woman, that's what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what we do. And you want someone to really compliment you. Um, you know, you can also, I, I just think it's important if you, if you wanted to put something a high value man looking for, you know, his, you know, goddess, I don't know. Yeah, I don't right. Know I know. Too, but like, you know, let's, let's elevate it. Right? Elevate, let's elevate it, your yeah. cheesiness. I love it. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm a cheesy person. I, I 100% love a good laugh. I, you know, and I'm always looking for fun. So I, the cheesy would catch my attention if it was elevated. I will say mm -hmm. that. Now, yeah. one thing you going back to just kind of when we meet them, and we're going to talk about here in a second, you, you do a mock dating process, but a, a, yes. a high elevated man, or a, what did you call it again? High value. High man. value man. I don't know. Elevated <laughs> just keeps coming to my mind. That's okay. <laughs> they take care of themselves, which includes fingernails. That is oh, something yeah. that I look at. And I don't care if you are a mechanic. I don't care if you are, you, you, you work with your hands constantly. I feel like you can take care of those hands by doing different things. So do you coach men on personal hygiene and care and just stuff like that as well? Yes, <laughs> that is definitely part of our sessions is grooming and um, if you will, hygiene. Uh, yes. So we really go over extensively, you know, even how much cologne to put on, you know, really just 
having the clean nails, that's huge. That's mm-hmm. like, you know, showering, even if you keep a beard, keep it trimmed, don't like have ear out your hair. I mean, there's all of these things that like, they don't know, we notice, and it's a really big turnoff. It's just like we take care of ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. I don't need you to be a super metro guy if that's not what you're into, right? Um, but you need to, when you're taking care of yourself, that is saying something about you, right? Mm-hmm. You are like, I value myself as a human. I, yes, I'm a mechanic, but I'm going to scrub my nails and get that grease out and I'm going to cut them and trim them and file them. Cause if I'm holding your hand, I don't want them to be rough or like cut her or, you know, it, it's like the little things that are so huge. Absolutely. So, yes, ma'am. Okay. So these are some great conversations that we're having and I'm learning I'm learning so much and I hope you guys are too that are listening. You know, there's some really good points here that I want you to hit home with. So we're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors. And when we get back, we're going to talk about the mock date process, what that looks like and what she does for that. So stay tuned with Celeste Moore after these messages. Do you want to be on a ship with over 6,000 wild and naked friends? Drop an anchor in exotic countries? Explore all the sexiness the world has to offer? Come join me, Dr. Stephanie, on the next Bliss Cruise and allow me to personally guide you to better sex in my play shops, workshops, and private couples sessions. I invite you to come and let your wild and sexy desires become a reality on the next Bliss Cruise. To learn where we are selling next, visit EvolveYourIntimacy.com backslash cruises. I can't wait to see you there. Hey guys, we are back and I am Dr. Stephanie with the Evolve Your Intimacy podcast and we are speaking with Celeste Moore and Celeste, I want to know all about your mock dating. Tell me more about this. So years back when I uh, became certified as a matchmaker, there was actually um, a woman in New York City and she started this business called Wing Woman and I thought it was so fascinating. She would go out with guys and she would basically be their wing woman at like a bar. And I just thought that was so cool because, you know, she's like there watching them, like kind of Mm -hmm. giving them feedback. And she'd come back and say, okay, maybe say this. And then I really thought about it as I've, and then as I became certified as an image consultant, we are trained at some level in um, dining etiquette. Mm -hmm. So not only do we have dating etiquette, dining etiquette uh, under our belt. So I really thought it would be great to do a mock date, a practice date. So the very first one is... They do everything like they should pick the date, Mm -hmm. pick the time that works for, you know, both of you, but like, there's a couple options Mm -hmm. and then I meet them at the place and we, we have a date and it's like basically everything that they would say, they would show up how they would show up. They would, um, I would see what, how they're using their manners and their skills and so on and so forth. And Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sitting there with the clipboard. I'm just <laughs> like notice, noticing these things. And so after we have, you know, a session or a console on the things where, okay, this could be a big turnoff. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, not everything is like negative. I do really want to make that clear that this is just where they can better themselves. So they can get to that second date. Well, you know what? You were picking steak out of your teeth, you know, like with your finger or something, or you didn't, you weren't a gentleman and you didn't like like open the door for me, Mm -hmm. or you are dominating the conversation and you weren't listening. And I think listening is 80% of really, um, learning, getting to know somebody. Mm -hmm. It's a very important skill. So I would practice guys, if you're listening, just talking to you know, starting conversations and really listening and like really hearing them Mm -hmm. because that's going to tell a woman that you care, that you show that you actually are interested. Mm -hmm. So there's all of these things that we do, um, uh, and the feedback that I give them and some of the packages I have, I allow them to, at the very end of the three month transformation, 
have another one and kind of say, wow, like, look what you, look what you learn. Look how you, look at your body language. Look at the way that you reacted to the waiter now, you know? Mm -hmm. So that one little turnoff, if someone was rude to a waiter, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to turn around and walk out. I don't tolerate that. I can't stand that. And people just, sometimes they don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't. And that yeah. is, that is a great example. That is a huge turnoff is mm-hmm. the way you treat people matters because we all watch that. And that oh, that's yeah. very uh, influential during a date or just in general and when you're in life and walking around. Right. And if you're treating somebody like crap, what do you, how are you going to treat me? You know, mm-hmm. are you going to ever yeah. talk to me that way? If so, I don't, I don't have time for that. Yeah. And the mock date. Okay. Can you give us an example of a time when you just were just struck with dumbfounded by some of the things that some of the guys have done because they thought it was normal? You don't have to get, I mean, no client names. One no- of, well, I, no, no, no. I, I say this, but it, you know, I said pick steak out with a finger, but it was actually a knife. <laughs> okay. Appalled. I was like, or um, I've been on dates where, Literally, their elbows are on it. Like, they're literally leaning over the table, the elbows on, and just, like, shoveling food in their mouth like it's trough. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Like, this is terrible. Like, who does that? And you're not or, – or just, you know, someone really not listening, watching the, the TV like it's a sports bar. Another one is on their phone. Oh, like, that's, it's a huge one these days, right? Yeah. Put the phone down. Yeah, absolutely. And has there ever been a time when you were on a date and you're like, wow, I kind of like this guy for myself? You know, I think I, so I, I do keep it very professional, but I, there are moments when I'm really like, I, I really want to praise them uh-huh. because this is this, when I tell them this is very attractive. Yes, this is what you're doing really well in this department. Um, Whether it's asking open-ended questions that are, you know, not, it's not an interview, right? Sure. We don't want the first date to be an interview. We want it to be light and see if there is like a connection and chemistry. So there's many ways that you can, we can do that. Um, But yeah, it's like when someone is really like listening or open. Pulls out the chair. Mm-hmm. It just allows you to be in your feminine energy, and they're owning their masculine energy. And I and I I want to just like make a quick note on that because look, I am a, a successful businesswoman, and I am in this masculine energy all day, mm-hmm. if you will. Right? It gets things done. You have a plan. Da 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 da. But when you're when it comes to dating. Coming out of that is really important because it allows the guy to really take over and do what he's supposed to do. And I don't mean make the decisions for you. Mm -hmm. I don't mean you still aren't who you are. But when you just allow him to, you know, you you allow the energy to shift. Mm -hmm. That is when a successful dating happens as well. So um, that is Honestly, as you're sitting here saying that, I was thinking to myself, man, that is so true. Because, you know, all day, every day, I run businesses and I have people in and out and clients and, you know, everybody looks to me for answers. And then when I go on a date, I want, I don't want to be the one in control. I don't want to be, I want to be the one who's, I want to embrace my feminine energy and Mm -hmm. just allow the masculine partner, male or female, to Right. Do what they love to do and be masculine and take care of me. You know, in today's dating world, it's there's just this confusion, right? What role do I play? Mm-hmm. Da 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 da. And it's like when just be your masculine, be the provider. Let her sit back and just let her talk. Let her not make a decision, like if if that's what she chooses to. Mm-hmm. But just get rid of the masculine energy of the going, the doing, the because if you open your own door, which is fine, but he wants to do that for mm-hmm. you. He wants to open that door for you. He wants to show that he's like taking 
control in a, in a, in a good sense. Sure. Right. <laughs> but I don't, I'm not necessarily taking control, but taking yeah. care is, is another way. Right, well. yeah. right. Yeah. That's a better word. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me help. Let me help you. And it's not, you're not playing the damsel in distress, but right. you are, allowing somebody to do something nice because yes. there are so many women who are like, I can open my own damn door. Listen, bitch, I can too, but I'll ask somebody to open it for me every now and then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't you shame know? these men. Cause I like my door opened. Yes, Just something simple. Yes, yes. You can, you can run with the reins in the mm -hmm. corporate world or your business or However you want, but when you're with the guy or the, with the masculine energy, just sit back and enjoy it and relax. Yes. Enjoy it. And take, take it. <laughs> so what are your top five dating absolute no-nos that you just drive you crazy for men that you've seen do? Um, so I would say first date, let's just kind of focus on that. Um, do not talk about exes. Mm. on the first day. Do not go there. I don't care how much you want to talk about it and how it's relating to something you remember because that is not what she wants to hear. Um, she's going to think that you're still in it somehow, some way. And that's a red flag. Another is don't talk about your children. I know that at some point, maybe on your profile, you have single dad, but don't go into that because first date is really, like I said, you just want to keep it light and fun and you just want to see if there's good energy, if there's a possibility of having a second date. Um, another one is don't talk so much. Oh, <laughs> Don't dominate the conversation. Allow her to speak more and you listen. You will get more out of that. She will respond to you so much better. <laughs> yeah. And this is not a don't, but like really pay attention, right? Mm. That is really ask like if she tells you something that's really important, make sure that you hear it and kind of say it in a way back just mm -hmm. so that she knows that you're listening. So what, you're, uh, what and, I hear you say is active listening. Listen to understand yes. and not listen to respond. I teach that all day, every day <laughs> to couples yes, yes. and individuals. Yeah. It's validating her, right? It's allowing her to feel safe. And that's another space that's in a masculine energy is being – in a space that is safe for her to be able to open up mm -hmm. because eventually, right. She wants to know that that's there for her. And I would say this is a don't, this is a do, but please be a gentleman. Please, please, please. If you say you're going to meet her at this time, be there two minutes early. If you say you're going to do something, follow up and do it. There's no games at this age in life. We don't need it. We just do what you say and be a gentleman. Absolutely. Open the door. Absolutely. Stand up as she leaves. You know, there's many ways that you can engage and be a gentleman. Mm, I love that. Be a gentleman. And if you don't know how to be a gentleman, <laughs> what are some things that they can look up online? If there's, are there websites that teach people just basic gentleman act activities, behaviors, actions? Oh, I'm sure there's a million. But if your mama didn't teach you. Right. <laughs> I feel like there's some basic underlying, that's a, that's a mother's job. <laughs> I know that's so old school, but it's very true. It's very important that yes, we can open our own door, open the door for us, walk in front first, open the door, make sure that if you're walking on the street, you walk on the side of the car, right? Let her walk inside the safer part, walk her near to the door or to her car, at least and opening mm -hmm. her door and having, you know, just those things. Um, are huge. And there's a million others just sure. Google like how to be a gentleman. <laughs> right, right. So I, I want to shift gears. And I want to talk about do you coach men with sex and intimacy concerns? So I do. And like I said, it's not as in depth as a sex therapist, a psychiatrist, a sex coach, even I there's many, many great people that have studied and studied extensively. Mm -hmm. I do have a sex and intimacy question, like a consult. And even if it's a more than one session, if it's something they just want to talk to me about, um, I feel that sex is so, and intimacy is very, there's obviously a difference, right? There's mm -hmm. intimacy. You can be intimate in so many different ways, not just through sex, obviously. Um, 
You say many... obviously, but that's not obvious. I'm here to yeah, tell that's you. that's true. That's people, true. Okay. they think that sex and intimacy are just penetration. And you're like, wow. True. Come on, guys. Intimacy is holding a hand with your partner or looking into their eyes or really like having moments where you're connecting mm-hmm. on a deeper level. And a lot of pe- a lot of guys that are usually either um, married or maybe have a fetish and they're just not too comfortable with maybe they're not even comfortable with themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. So if they need further assistance, I go like this. But I also teach them very basic ways to spice up their sex life, depending on what that is. Um, I give tell. examples. Yeah, give examples, please. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I think the women are the ones that are usually complain the most, mm-hmm. just in my experience. And what is it that they're not being fulfilled with? Is it the same same sexual positions, the same place they're having sex? Uh, maybe a fantasy is actually something they'd like to act out, or maybe it's fantasy through porn, which I think can be healthy. Absolutely. I know porn is very, uh, there's lots of ways it's not healthy, but there are ways it can be uh, a very healthy um, Avenue. tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so it's really like, you know, making sure that like they're starting with flirting, they're starting building with women because women need time. We need time to build. Um, we don't always just want to, you know, drop our panties and get right to sex. And mm-hmm. guys have no problem. Usually have, I should, I'm not stereotyping because there's a lot that aren't, but majority speaking, guys usually have something in their head, they're visual, they look at what you're wearing and they just can get turned on. Well, you know, start with flirting, start sexting her during the day, you know, um, create a very romantic date or some adventure that maybe you wanted to try that you haven't before. Um, there's so many ways. Um, so you said adventure and adventure dating, getting your adrenaline pumping on the first date. Is yes. that is so amazing because w- what you're doing is when we get our adrenaline pumping or when we do something adventurous, whatever that is, that's up to you to decide. Your brain is going to release those chemicals and that that great yummy serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin that just makes you those are the love quote unquote love chemicals. I always tell people go on an adventure, make it spicy but not sexual spicy. Like maybe we're going to go skydiving or maybe we go, even if it's like to talk golf or something to where you're getting your little competition heart, little, little adrenaline pumping to where those chemicals are being released because that kind of makes the person like you a little bit. And that leaves an impression. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because that is like my number one. If someone's like, what should be my first date? It's not dinner. Mm-mm. It's I really don't like cocktails either because I think you're just kind of muddling it, right? I really recommend go go paddleboarding or whatever you're like where and whatever. And it's also a good experience. Like if you always wanted to try skydiving, mm-hmm. right? And you know that this guy is going to go with you. So worst case, you have an experience skydiving that you never did before, but. Yes, you're getting those great chemical good feelings that we <laughs> that are released, but also it tells you about the person. There's things that you learn through that experience, whether or not that person is for you. If they're just like, oh, nope, that's not for me. I just want to chill and do Netflix. And you're like, oh, okay, this isn't my guy because I need someone that's going to try things once in a while. Mm-hmm. Or he's talking to the instructor, um, weird or I don't know, you know, there's all rude. Yeah. Or rude. And, um, or if he's like, Oh, I'm going to get my socks dirty. I, you know, there's all these things that could come up. So I, I think it's the best thing to do. Some really great context clues comes out of those adventure type dates. Yes. (laughs) And, and, and I like to say, I like to have people who are dating do those very early very early, if not the first date, maybe the second or third, because there are, there are, there are so many great things you're going to learn about the person in that environment. And listen, when we're dating, if you're dating with a purpose, you're dating to find your person, right? Some people are serial daters. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's your thing. That's kind of what I'm doing right now, but that's my thing. And I go into that with an open, honest outlook, and this is who I am and this is what I'm doing. But if you're, if you're dating to find your person, 
you might have to go on several dates with several different people and that's okay. Don't, don't grasp onto the first person that you see because they may not be the right fit for you. And that's okay. It's okay to say you're not, I'm not feeling this. You're not the person for me. You know, you're a great person, but I just don't think we're a good fit. Be honest. Be honest. Right. Yes. And also I want to add to that, you know, people that are newly dating too are still trying to figure out what they want, Mm -hmm. right? You might know what you want or this was really great in my last relationship, but Ooh, maybe I don't want this anymore. So it's okay to date multiple people. Mm-hmm. It's the only way you're going to, yes, a find your person, but also find out about yourself. Absolutely. We're doing this. Yeah. This is about finding out who you are as well. This is not about just getting laid or, you know, getting married or whatever your goal might be. It's about mm-hmm. the experience. And I compare this to an orgasm. As we're sitting here talking, I compare this, the world is so orgasm focused, you know, oh, Mm -hmm. did you have an orgasm? Did you have an orgasm? Well, what about the experience leading up to the orgasm? And so people forget about that. And I had a client the other day and, you know, this client was so fixated on this goal. And I was like, okay, well, what happens when you get there? I said, you're you're acting like it's an orgasm. What's afterwards? But what about the Mm -hmm. experience leading up to it? The pleasure, enjoy the pleasure. And I think the dating process is the pleasure. And so if you're getting the red flags right from the beginning, it's okay to say, hey, this isn't for me because there's somebody out there who is for you. You just have to mm-hmm. continue your search. And that's right, okay. Right. Yes, it's the foreplay. Exactly. Exactly. Foreplay is so important. Men, don't forget. That's, I guess, my whole point of starting. And, and there's little moments that can be foreplay. It's not just touching. It's you know, sexual talk. It's just little things. It's the act of actually doing something for that person to make their life a little less easy. That's also a turn on for Mm -hmm. some people. So yeah, no, it is. Think of all the love languages and sprinkle a little of each in there. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't be afraid and don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I love the, would you rather, would you rather do this or would you rather do that and get to know somebody that way because you find out a lot. All right, so we need to take our last commercial break for this episode, and we will be right back to finish talking foreplay with Celeste Moore after these messages. Hang tight. Ladies, are you ready to take your intimacy to the next level? And gentlemen, do you want to add more tools to your sexual repertoire? Head over to our website, EvolveYourIntimacy.com, to learn more about intimacy, relationships, and sex counseling. And if you enjoy our content and our guest, we would love to have you help us grow. Go to our website, EvolveYourIntimacy.com to follow, like, and subscribe to all of our social media accounts. Now, let's get back to the show. Hey guys, this is Dr. Stephanie from Evolve Your Intimacy, and we are back talking with Celeste Moore and Celeste. Right before the break, we were about to start talking about foreplay. And in my very humble opinion, it's okay to do this all throughout the day. So maybe you send a flirty text or, you know, maybe you just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. That can be intimate and be a measure of foreplay. It doesn't have to be a dick pic. Can we talk about this? Mm. Oh, um, God. <laughs> is that something that you coach your, your gentleman through? Uh, yeah. Do not do that, please. I don't care. Nobody will. Look, even if you love what a penis looks like. You know, do that if if that is like 10 years down the road and that's just a thing that you and your wife decide to do or your girlfriend or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, please. So, so trashy. Like, it, no. It really it. is. It really is. And people do it and they it, it, it's their opening thing. They'll, I'll open up an email or a text message and it's a penis. And I'm like, oh, come on. Really? <laughs> Let's just not do that. I think that's part of the etiquette that we need to teach our dating etiquette in 101. Um, very first is don't do that. Yeah. So how do you teach people? Because I, I have a lot of clients and, and I am not a dating expert, relationship expert when it comes to out there. I am mental. I am. Let's talk about what got us here, what we need to do to fix things. I am path, I'm psychological, pathological, whatever you want to call me, but I am not an expert in dating and flirting. And I mean, I know what I like, but 
what do you, how do you teach men how to flirt? Cause that's the hardest thing for me to do. Cause people are like, well, how do I flirt? And I'm like, well, hell, I don't know. Be yourself. I don't know. How, so give us some tips. So for men, I highly recommend making really good eye contact with her and smiling because a smile just like is warm and engaging and she knows that you're interested in her to the point where you're leaning in, right? You're, you're really like, you know, smile, leaning in, paying attention right there. She's going to know that you are engaging. Mm -hmm. You're listening. There's also where you can just put the hand on her shoulder, like a very, like very small gesture or the small of her back. If you're feeling Mm. a little bit more intimate. Um, Yes. Keeping your body language open. Don't cross any arms or legs, anything like that, because that's sending the wrong message. And it's asking questions. I think for a woman, how we know is when you're asking like those questions, those open-ended questions about, so what are some of your passions right now in life? What If they want to get to know you more, they're flirting with you. Or say something very, instead of like, oh, instead of you look nice, you look very sexy in those jeans, or just very something subtle where it's not too gross, right? Or mm-hmm. you have such beautiful eyes, you know, those things. And really mean what you say, because she'll know it's bullshit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my last kind of question is, I know you said it was a complete transformation. So there is there mm-hmm. anything else that you want to include that you do maybe in this three month process that we haven't talked about yet? So, yes, I do a health and wellness kind of, um, I have a lot of, a lot of people that I recommend to, if this is something, but we really go over like basic health and wellness Mm -hmm. as well, because when you are creating confidence, it's not just about your color, not just about the clothes. It's not just about nonverbal, verbal communication, right? It's the, how you hold yourself. It's not just about smiling and what to do, but it's also about how you're taking care of yourself. If you're eating well and sleeping well and you have more of a sex drive, if you're eating the right foods, if you're exercising, all these things that we need to do for just health and wellness, but it also, for men specifically, helps with erection, helps Mm -hmm. with ED, it helps with, um, I can't say testosterone, but there are some foods that help with that. But Mm -hmm. just, you know, going, it's a full you know, transformation and also anything that there's nothing that's we cannot talk about in coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. So I really want it to be, you know, it's very discreet. I don't talk about it. I don't put post, I don't post pictures of you. I, I, it's not who my client is. Um, yeah. So anything, like I said, anything that's related to sex or intimacy. And like I said, if, if I feel that this is like a real big area for them, then I, then I refer them out. Okay. But we go over, yeah, so profile, like, um, just making sure I'm <laughs> yeah. There's so many little steps here. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, that is a lot. So, that is a lot. And I love how you are helping refine and define gentlemen in the world today. Thank you. Especially since I've been watching Bridgerton and I'm learning all of this Ooh. stuff. <laughs> Lord help me. That is my favorite show right now. I'm ready for season yes. three. But yes, <laughs> I watch those those men and they're such gentlemen, even though, I mean, that's how it used to be. And um, my little heart is like, oh, that's so sexy. So if you want to yes. learn how to be a gentleman, maybe watch Bridgerton. I don't know. It's right. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> this is what to do. Yes. How to, woo, how to woo a woman or swoon a woman. Yes. Right? Yes. There's something about courtship, though. Right. Mm-hmm. There's something about the. There's, there's modern day courtship, not Absolutely. Just, you know, old word. And that's really is, you know, guys still want to have a chase, mm-hmm. right? They still want to win you because that means you're worth something. Yeah. It means you're valuable. So look, we're all adults. If you want to have sex on the first date, go for it, whatever you do you, mm-hmm. but just know that if you're looking for that, like this is, this is it. I just want one person in my life. Then don't give it up so easy. Make them work for it. (laughs) I agree. I mean, let's, let's have some fun before Mm -hmm. we have the the fun, right? Exactly. (laughs) I get it. 
So where can my listeners, where can they find you? Where can they, where can they get more information and possibly come work with you? Sure. Um, well, you can go to my website, uh, Celeste more M O O R E.com. And even if you just want to sign up for some freebies, I throw those out a couple, every couple months, um, with some really great tidbits in there, some juicy details. Um, I also do weekly blogs that send a lot of great information. So if you don't want to work with me, at least you have, you know, some questions answered at, you can also find me on IG at Celeste Moore image, LinkedIn, Celeste Moore, um, but I also have a podcast called the Down and Dirty Podcast. Ooh, I love it! And yeah, and you know, every every week uh, an episode is launched. We have any where we have porn stars, we have sex coaches, we have uh, where we talk about you know etiquette and style, and we have all sorts of things that we talk about that's dating related in this modern world. So um, it's a great another avenue for you to look look me up. It's the Down and Dirty with Celeste Moore. And, you know, hopefully you can get some tidbits or send me a DM and we can jump on a free consult and just see if we're a good fit. I love it. Well, I want to thank you for taking your time today and spending an hour, an hour-ish with me <laughs> yeah. and uh, sharing your great knowledge. You are just, I'm telling you, you were fascinating when I found you online and you're even more fascinating now that I've got to meet you. And Aww. um Thank I appreciate, you. like I said, everything you do for the for the men of the world and the tidbits and knowledge that you do or that you provide. And and yeah, I think that men need you and you're a vital asset to the community. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll have to do this again. So as Celeste mentioned, she has a podcast called The Down and Dirty Podcast, and I get to be a guest on that coming up soon, so I will keep you all posted on where you could find that information and so you can listen as well. I have had an amazing last couple of months with traveling, with business, with award ceremonies, with myself personally, and I understand that the podcast has kind of taken a back seat because honestly, um, I ended up losing my dad unexpectedly. He uh, passed away in June. And so I've had a really hard time with dealing with his death, dealing with the divorce, dealing with all of the things as well as all of the great things. So I had to take some time to step back and really work on me and be there for, of course, my, my stepmom and my daughter and my, uh, siblings. And so, <sighs> It has been an exhausting, overwhelming last couple of months, but thank you all for sticking with me and believing in me. And even through it all, I ended up still winning some of those awards. And that's because again, like I said earlier, that's because of you all. I have so many great things coming up. We have some really big, huge announcements that I can't wait to tell you. So please stay tuned to all the social media. If you're not on social media yet with us, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, our website, evolveyourintimacy.com has all of that and so much more. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you all at my next event. Or if you need someone to work with you individually, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, thank you all for everything and for sticking with me through some of the most terrible times that I've had to experience in my, in my life. So again, I don't, can't say it enough. Thank you all until next time. Good night. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to listen to my show. I am Dr. Stephanie with Evolve Your Intimacy. And remember, you are not in this alone, and we are definitely here to help. You can learn more about all the amazing things that we do at EvolveYourIntimacy.com. And if you subscribe to our newsletter, you will receive free resources monthly to help you evolve your intimacy. Thank you again, and have a great night.